What's up, Selassie? What's up? How you doing? Let me tell you something. Get the person out the passage while I'm dwelling at. I leave the cross feet so we can sink inside your brain. The first to paint the picture without being stressed or pain. But with the love, we'll do the two words in the same. No accidents and shit happen for a reason. Look out, we're young enough, folks. Oh, yeah, I had to meet This is Brandon King, and today. I get to have a nice, good sit-down interview talking about Selassie's new project, I Am Selassie Black and White, right, along right. with some more in-depth stories about, about his creative flow, about how he got to where he is today. <laughs> so first off, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How you doing today? Not too bad, not too bad. Appreciate it. So, how, how has the project been coming along so far? Um... Honestly, as of tomorrow, the projects will be completely finished. Um, tomorrow is actually the listening party. It's a private listening party for those that I chose to come in and help pick the track list. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Do we have uh, any of the names that are confirmed? That are coming? Yes. Um, unfortunately, not yet. And I don't know if I want to disclose those individuals yet. Um, Just my job as an interviewer. No, I got I got to try to nitpick. You know how it is. No, that's cool. That's cool. So, how did you come up with the idea for having a black and white album? Uh, that's funny because, honestly, I check the heater. Um, honestly, when I first went into this project, it was I wanted to do a thirty-three track album, and um, well, I guess I should say a 33-track mixtape is what I originally wanted. Uh -huh. um, and then through the time progressing, it was like, all right, well, I want to do an album. I wasn't quite sure, but I knew I wanted this to be um, a whole representation of what my past 11 years have been like through music. So it went from that, and then everybody was like, nah, you can't do 33 tracks. Nobody has attention span for that. Nobody wants to listen to 33 tracks, this, this, and that. So I went through like a lot of like self-battles at this point because yeah. I remember even battling with uh, a friend of mine about it for a while, and then I hit up somebody that I'm really close with. Um, shout out to Sarah J. Um, she, she told me... The realistic of it about you know dropping such a big album yeah and you know the ups and downs of it so from there i decided you know what can i do to still wrap that theme together and still hit home with what i really originally wanted to do so what what's that what's the overall theme of, of these two albums balance 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 that's the that's the that's the key everybody has to look for um because I mean, we can even go to, I'm mixed, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, Italian, black, you know what I mean? So there's the black and white there. And then you have, you know, as above is below, you got the darkness, and then you have the light, and then through darkness you see the light, and then, you know, you got the good and evil. So it's, it's, a, it's a battle, but the thing is, you always have to remember that even in the bad, there's always good, and even in the, in the good, there's always bad, you yeah. know what I mean? So, regardless of what album you're going to get, you just got to remember it's bad. Wow. <laughs> okay, you left me speechless. The main reason why is because I've known you for a while. I did not expect the the in-depth detail. I know, you, uh, I know you that you have uh, really strong beliefs towards a lot of... Um, Spiritual beliefs, correct? Correct, correct. Uh, so was that, did that play a major role in trying to decide everything else with, the, oh, yeah. with this album? Oh, yeah. I try to stay... Um, how should I say? I try to stay cryptic as much as possible. Um, for those that are really not just hashtag woke, yeah. for those that are really woke, um, you know, the 33 has a symbol. Um, you know, the earth vibrates at 33 frequency you know what I mean like the vibration of that um you know I'm not gonna go into a whole detail about the 33 but you know that's something for everybody to look up yeah. you know what I mean um I feel like after 11 years I have reached um I shouldn't say a master level but I am now mentally and creatively in the zone to where 
I am creating masterpieces. So um, the 33 was to put the stamp on there to let you know that I'm master and this, this, this project was everything that I intended it to be. You know what I mean? Because before I always bounced around between like, oh, well you should do street music because that's what's going on. Or you gotta do club music because that's what's going on. But in the back of my mind, I always wanted to be conscious. Yeah. So it was, again, finding that balance. It all comes back down to balance for you, doesn't it? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I've heard a few of the tracks. I know you've released two of them, correct? Yeah. As singles. Yes. What, which, what are those two? Uh, the first one I did was Myself. Um, that, that song, to me, was a perfect introduction. Um, what's that song kind of about? Uh, the song is really about finding yourself. Um, I mean, through anything that I've ever done in my life, there's always this trial and tribulation in this journey. And it took me until like recently to really realize that it's not about the destination, it's really about the journey. So the song Finding Myself was, uh, Myself was, through this project, I'm about to find out who I really am. And the funny being that it started, the song came out and I wrote that song before the whole you know, album started to come together. So it was almost like a stepping stone of a mind, putting myself on a platform to like really be able to get a good perspective. That, that puts you in a good mindset yeah, exactly. for the rest of the whole entire project. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So. And I, I gotta say, that's a great song. Appreciate it really it. is. Yeah, you, you can, <laughs> you can feel where you're going with that, and you, it's it's relatable. Mm -hmm. It's as relatable as it can be trying to find yourself and what you love doing. Right, and I tried to keep it old school hip hop with it too. So oh hell yeah, get that, that touch to it. So uh, shout out to the dude, uh, my boy, sarcastic sounds from Canada. He's the one that made the beat. He killed that beat. Yeah, he's also got another track on the album too. Which I'm one sure might that be? Footprints. Footprints? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we'll get into that one here in a minute. What, yeah. What's the other single that you have out? Um, the other one is I've Been, and that's with one of my um, good friends and, well, uh, was label mate, um, LSJ. And this song is, <laughs> it's pretty crazy because the first time I heard it, I didn't even hear myself on it. I heard mm -hmm. LSJ. Yeah. So it had that, was, like that pop style. Yeah, it had this. It had this this vibe to it that was somewhat what he likes to do. Yeah. And already, I was already in love with the beat. You know what I mean? But mentally, in my mind, I knew that LSJ would kill on this. You know what I mean? So going into the song, I already knew that it was going to be about a girl or you know some type of emotion. Yeah. You know, especially working with LSJ because that's like his good. That's his good. That, that's you know, his niche, song you know, Exactly. You know what I mean? He can so, kill that shit. Um, I, you know, I asked him to get on it, and it just it just worked. It just meshed so perfect because yeah. he's more of a laid back artist, and then I'm more of the aggressive, <laughs> uh, as you would like to say. Um, very true <laughs> so it meshed really good and it, it's also different from myself because it's it can merge into clubs you know yeah. what i mean so it's totally different genres that's what's up you I and mean, i know on the rest of your album you have a very wide variety going from trying to really pull those emotion strings in people yeah making yeah. them want to cry <laughs> to where it's just like a club hit man i've cried on making this album bro man, I'm not even i lie. believe it i believe it <laughs> Um, so you come from Ohio. Yeah. What kind of influence does that have into your music? A lot of influence. Um, in my city, we're kind of overlooked besides like the football side because we're, we're really big on football. So, you know, that's something everybody really roots for. But musically, yeah. there's a lot of artists out there, um, that I, you know, that I admired for years before I even getting into music. Yeah. So... Um, being in the Midwest, you got the lyricist of the East Coast mixed with a little bit of the South, mm -hmm. you know, and then we touch base on West Coast every now and then. So it's kind of a good mixture. So, you know what I mean? It was having that as a as a foundation of coming into the game helped me really well. So I have to give a lot of thanks to my city. And I know you have a good friend from Ohio. Uh, on this album. Yes, yes. Uh, what was it? Ca Caliente, right? Yep, shout out to Caliente. Yeah, that's my boy, man. We went to high school together. Um, 
we had some songs in the past, like Backstabbers. He redid that. That was a that was a cool little <laughs> a cool little remake we did. Um, but this one, it was like I know what he went through as a struggle as being an artist coming from that from our city and what I had to go through and you know what I mean? And like literally this is the life that we chose, you know what I mean? So the song's called Chose. Uh it's pretty much this is this is what it is, and that's just it. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, this is what we're fighting for. So, I think it was good for me to touch bases with somebody back home on a song like that because, you know, in Ohio is when I chose this life. You know right. what I mean? So, it was, it was good. so and then from Ohio, you went to uh, you went to Arizona, correct? Yeah. Well, I went to Pittsburgh. For you're a traveling man. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Pittsburgh for probably about a year and a half uh, with a homeboy I went grew up with pretty much. Um, yeah, we were out there for about a good year and a half, and then I went to Arizona. You should say. How how, how was the music out in Pittsburgh? Um, at that time. Cause I mean I know that it's it's been strong in the past. I I don't know how yeah. it is currently or anything else. Um, during that time, that's when Wiz was starting to come up. Yeah. Um, so. The city was definitely had some good music going. I really wasn't into the music scene at that time. I think I went on a little hiatus because, you know, I left home. I'm going to go do my nine to five and, you know, try yeah. to get my life together. So it really wasn't about music at that point. So I guess I really didn't pay attention too much. So, and I mean, I know uh, Mac Miller's another artist that was coming out there in mm -hmm. the last five years. So that's mm -hmm. why I didn't know. Since yeah. Hey, you and then you went. You said, "Blah." Then you went to Arizona. Well, uh, I mean, okay, let's 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 okay. rewind it. Let's, All right, let's go. As a child, yeah. I had went to Arizona. Um, I think I was, shit, I don't know, nine to twelve to thirteen, somewhere yeah. around, somewhere around. Young there. teen. Yeah, and then I went back to Ohio. So that's sometimes it can get confusing in my music because. I referenced Arizona a lot. Yeah, and that's why I was asking. Yeah, I've been out there three total trips, you know what I mean? As a child, middle and high school, and then later on in my years. So. I mean, I was born out in Arizona, so I mean, I got to rep it sometime. <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. Yeah, hey, I love Arizona, man. Dude, Arizona's For awesome. Uh, what, like, what was that like? What, like why'd you decide to go to Arizona? Um, as a child, it wasn't my decision. It was yeah, my, but it was as my you, mom. As um, you grew older. Actually, every decision I went out there was for my mom. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, well, I guess the third time I really, uh, shit. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to say this without getting too serious about what happened. Um, but you know, I had a rough childhood, so you know, uh, me and my mom haven't always had the best connection. Right. So um, I guess we tried to rekindle the flame a couple times, and we just you know haven't been able to mesh. Um, the last time it was me and my ex that went out there and uh, we stayed for a little bit, but you know, noticed some things, you know, just wasn't making me uncomfortable. So I decided yeah. to come back to Dallas. So I love Arizona, don't get me wrong, besides that situation. I met one of my best friends out there, shot the streets. What's up, boy? Yeah. Uh, he's from New York, actually. So um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I have a lot of good memories out there. So then, how? Uh from Arizona, you came to Dallas. Yeah. Why did you choose Dallas? Oh, oh shit. Okay, no. <laughs> Let's rewind. Okay, so rewind again. Okay. Damn. There's so many times I went out there. Okay, so <laughs> from my high school, my high school year, I think it was my senior year. Um, I didn't get to graduate with none of my classmates. Yeah. I guess at that point I didn't care about school. I was, you know, running the streets, being knuckleheads. Stupid you know. team. That, yeah, that's, exactly. That, everyone goes through it. Exactly. So I missed like a portion of my high school year because I went to Arizona. So from that point on um, until I was what, in 2001, or 2011, I'm sorry, 2011, I moved to Dallas. So you've been here for five years now. Yeah, exactly. So in that midst of me being in Dallas is when yeah. I went to Arizona. So let's get that back. Okay. All right. Why I chose Dallas. Yes. Okay. Um, shit. Uh, I had a friend, uh, Brian, shout out to B. Uh, he moved out here with his girl. Or she was already out here. He moved. I think that's how the story went. Are you talking about B? 
No, not be. Oh. Not be Billy. Oh, uh, that's what it's I'm thinking. Be, I'm thinking yeah. Billy. <laughs> I was uh, like, you're talking about B. <laughs> same name, same name. Yeah, right. There's a lot of B's out there. There is. Um, but no, nah, he uh, he had moved out here, and I'm not gonna lie, I was sitting on the couch at this girl's house I was talking to, and I was just looking out the window, and I literally had this, I don't know what you call it, a premonition, whatever you want to call it, that I got shot walking out of our grocery store, which was Giant Eagle. I don't know what, you know, I, I've done some stuff in my past, and some things that got taken away out of, you know, people just talking and running their mouth, so... There was a lot of stuff that was going on at the time, you know what I mean? And I was just like in this, I, I didn't know what, you know what I mean? I was already questioning what was going on at the point already. Yeah. So, like when that happened, I was just like, you know, a lot of my friends had ditched me. You know, I'm not really too close with my family, but I am, you know what I mean? I'm starting to grow distant at that point. Yeah. And, uh... It was just, it was a, it was a huge thing, and I, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I tried to go to college at one point. You know what I mean? I didn't even graduate high school, to be honest with you. Um, I just passed the test to get into college. I'm not dumb. You know what yeah, I mean? No. Like, I, no, I know. I, I'm just saying, like, I, I, you know, I never applied myself in high school just for, yeah. for that fact. But, you know, I was like, man, there's nothing else for me to do. You know, I tried to prove myself to people. Um, you know, I tried to do the nine to five and nothing seemed to work. So when that vision came, it was like, man, get the fuck out. <laughs> Real talk. Now that I got some of your backstory out, we can talk about footprints. Yeah. That's why I was trying to get into that. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is footprints, if you don't mind talking about it? All right, so... Damn, this is a real ass interview. Um, <laughs> so like I said, as a child, you know, uh, my dad was addicted to crack cocaine. And um, I'm gonna be honest, uh, my mom did some things to me that weren't exactly uh, punishment material. They were a little extensive. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I used to go to counseling as a child and have to you know, deal with a lot of different things and, you know, family pulling me this way and, you know, certain stuff like that. So, uh, Footprints was like the first verse is just like an introduction of, you know, what I'm seeing. And it's like, you know, your parents try to act like something's not happening, but as a child, they're more observant than anybody. So we're sitting here watching and I'm watching this, you know what I mean? From my dad scratching on the walls being drugged out to you know what I mean to like just crazy things you know what I mean so it's like my me going through that to now it was like I hope my impact on people was enough to leave an impression of you know change and love and you know different different way of looking because you know within that bad I became a better person you yeah. know what I mean so I looked at myself for many years until I hit, I think, 26. I was, like, stupid happy because I was no longer a statistic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think I actually cried on that birthday because I was like, I'm not a statistic. You know what I mean? I was on that road. So, you know, Footprints was just, you know, my journey from Ohio to Pittsburgh to Arizona to Dallas. Yeah. All that. So. And that, and that song, bro, I've listened to it multiple times. <laughs> And every single time, I swear, it just gets better and better and better because the the, the lyrics that you put into it, mm -hmm. they hit home for everyone. Right. And I, and that that's a real question. Do it like did I leave did I leave a footprint that that's gonna be good for someone else? Whether even if it's just that one person, mm -hmm. did I make that small impact? Right. And it's. That's that's a real song, bro. That's a real song. Yeah. Um, I know you have a lot of songs that you have thirty three songs total on these two albums, or uh, it's more like thirty six all together. Wow. Yeah. And I know there was one that you were kind of talking about not too long ago, uh, called "Fuck Love." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck love. That's a good song. Um. 
Shit, that song, the first time I even heard the beat, shout out to Danny E.B., um, I was just going through YouTube and I just seen it and I was just like, man, you know, I never wrote a song that was like really about the aggressive side of how love can make you. So it was like, how can I portray the emotion and, you know, how I felt at them points when, you know, a girl would left me walking, just took a girl on a date and she left me walking or, you know, or, you know, the girl that goes ghost after a couple of days or, you know, this is the crazy stuff, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, nobody has a song that's like, fuck that, you know what I mean? Like It's either, whenever it's about love, it's all about the happy side. Yeah. Or, or there's a, some of, there's some sad ones, yeah. but not the anger. Yeah, well, I, I didn't go like, you know, I want a domestic violence type no, shit. No, but... <laughs> I didn't go Eminem, fuck but love. it was like, it was just middle finger to that type of emotion, like, fuck love. So, I feel like, it's one of them songs, man, like, you can seriously relate to, because everybody has been in it, whether you're a guy or a girl, it's happened. It's realistic. It's realistic as hell. <laughs> so, with all these uh, songs coming out, you have your Black album coming out first. Right, right. Uh, what was the decision uh, that had to be made to say, I want the Black Album to be released first? Through Darkness, You See Light. So That balance. Um, I wanted the Black Album. The Black Album actually has a different theme than the White Album. The Black Album, um, shout out to Lil Wayne. Um, on the Carter 2, he did something very, very unique. And I like fell in love with it and it was the intro the interlude and the um, outro it was pretty much the same instrumentation just mixed up and he was just going in on it yeah so it was like man you know kadeem shout out to architect uh he made a beat and i was just laying there and i think i passed out on the couch or something i woke up and like he had to rearrange this like orchestrated huge beat i mean i'm talking there's like 23 sounds in this in this instrumentation so you know what i mean like you're looking at it it looks like legos or tetris you know what i mean like it's yeah just all these different so i was like man i don't want to rap all the way through this like that but and that's when it hit me split it up into three parts split it up into three parts so it was like this will give the theme for the black album so when you're listening to it it keeps you entwined with what's going on so then once the white comes it's oh, like yeah. It's, it's there. And it's gonna be, it's, I'm actually really excited for the release of your Black Album. Uh, what is that release date? January 11th, which is my birthday. On your birthday, yep. you're going to have the Black Album released. And what all platforms is that going to be on? Um, iTunes, Spotify, uh, I don't know, Deezer, um, Google, uh, Music. Amazon, everywhere. Every, everywhere. Everywhere you can pretty much find music. Exactly, exactly. Do you have a release party being planned for this? Um, I want to do something. I'm not going to lie. I really, really want to. I wanted to do a all-black party. And before the white album, I want to do an all-white party. So, you know what I mean? I want it to be as theatrical themed as possible. You know what I mean? So what you mean by all-black party here? Everybody's dressed in straight black. Whether it's black. nice and formal or just nice black formal. black t shirt. Hey look, I get tired of going to clubs. I got dressed, so yeah. a lot of places be like, Oh you can't come look man, you can bust a sag, whatever the hell the case <laughs> is. You know what I mean? Like if you're coming out to listen and enjoy the music, that's all we care about. So, um especially after this private listening party, I'll know the actual order of the track list. So you're leaving that up to the people, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Uh, I've never seen anybody do this before, um, but I don't want to choose the track list, and I don't want anybody on the team to choose the track list. So what I did was put a sheet together with all the songs, and they choose black or white. Yeah. Um, so this puts it in the hands of the consumer, and it also gives the consumer a chance to actually be a part of my project. So if, you know, a very does, vital part of your project. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, you know, if the album does well, you know, they could tell their kids about it. Like, oh, you know, I got to help to take the track list for this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I like giving back as much as possible. So that's that's just a way for me to try to bring people in to, um, you know, 
get more involved. And then, uh, release date for your White Album, do you have one selected yet? <laughs> I ain't telling y'all that. <laughs> hey, come on now. Come on nope, now. Nope, nope. Hey, this is, this is, this is, oh, it is, I guess it is live. Yes, it is live. <laughs> Nope. Not even, not a month, not, not a season. Even. I can't even tell you that. I will tell you that Suasi, my band, is having an album coming out too. When so. is that gonna be? Ah, uh, is that gonna be on your birthday as well? No, I'm thinking about February. February for that one? Yeah, that one's gonna be what an is, epic. That what is epic. that one? Because I've been following you around doing the, doing the documentary here, and I heard a little bit of of. Uh, Congas and trumpets and everything else. Mm -hmm. So what is this album that you guys are making? Man, this is... Okay, so remember I talked about balance before? Yes. Um, instead of me fighting where I came from and who I am and denying that, I do my solo projects. So, you know, you'll get more of the streets. You'll get more of the, uh, you know, other stuff that I, you know, um, have done. And then on my band side, I wanted to do something really revolutionary. Um, this is like a canvas that I sat and painted, literally. Um, you know, I grew up not really knowing too much about instruments. You know, you get made fun of, you get, you know, play an instrument or, you know, whatever the case may be. So All the band people were losing. Yeah, it was, and it, that's, how it was, that's how it was looked, unfortunately. And... Um, you know, I had some friends that were in band, but where my mindset was at at that point was nowhere near that. So um, now being more musically inclined, um, I want everything. So I pretty much put it together a, what was it, seven piece band. And then we added new sounds um, from saxophone, trumpet, percussion, to even the vibraphone that we're going to be getting soon. So. Um, it's very everywhere, like jazz, rock, reggae, hip hop, everything you could think of. What's the name of the album? It's Rebirth. Uh, why Rebirth? It's because when I first tried to do this, you know, it takes little stepping stones. Um, Selassie I dropped a album called No Genre. And me and Yash tried to shoot for a more live sound on that, but yeah. we didn't have um, the members of the band to do it. So then we met Greg. Um, so we incorporated as much as we could. So this one, I really so, wanted to... So the to... band started out with three people. Three people, exactly. All right, continue then. Um, went from three people to just, you know, full-on seven, eight people, you know what I mean? Like, it was just a matter of time for me to get the message across to certain people and try showing them the vision for them to really get it. And... What really helped is the name of our band, Silasii, is homage to Hail Silasii, um, which was the king of Ethiopia. He was announced as the king of kings, you know, the reincarnation of Jesus, you know, the whole right. shebang, you know what I mean? Um, I don't like to push too much into Rastafari with my music because, you know, it's not a religion, it's a way of life. So yeah. I, don't, I don't try to preach it as much as possible. But what people need to understand about what this means mm -hmm. is his saying across the board, no matter what, was everybody should be in peace, love, and happiness, and we should live in unity. So that is his big thing. He was one of the biggest conquerors of all time, but he walked in peace. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to get across. Not the fact that, you know, the king of kings and all that, let me, you know, live my way of life nobody else has to really worry about that yeah. but what the message was is what I was trying to come across that's I can respect that a lot appreciate it uh, one word that I caught out of that that you said was overstand yes <laughs> why don't you explain that to the people on what overstand really means um so I'm very militant and I try not to fall into the mainstream of the Western civilization, society, yeah. way of life. So um, there's trigger words that we say throughout our day that have a lot of negative vibe around it. And I don't know if anybody's ever noticed or, I mean, I've witnessed it with you, but when someone's talking to you and they're like, 
do you understand me? It's always a demeaning. It's always like a like a push down. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Do you understand? You're pretty much you're undering yourself under somebody else. Yeah. And if you really understand something, then you want to see eye to eye to that person. Yeah. You don't want to see it below them no. because then you're not really getting it. So, so understand is, is eye to eye. You comprehend what they're exactly. saying. Exactly. It's not. It's not. No, nah, you're not, you know, higher than me. Even though a lot of people don't mean it that way, yeah. but you have to realize the tonality of what you're saying it and when you do say it. And like you witnessed yourself when someone said uh, it, it's just like you. Once you get that concept, you're like, whoa. You, know you don't. I mean? in, you don't realize it though. No. Nah, because don't. it's it's that's the way we were. That's what we were taught exactly. was to understand, mm -hmm. not to overstand, not to be equal. We have to all. Exactly. There's someone that's always above you. Exactly, and the cops are main ones to do that, boy. They will be quick to tell you, do you understand me? And it's like, we already know that you're a cop above the law yeah. at this point. So, I mean, no, I overstand you. I get what you're saying, now move on type shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's... Out, out of that, though, you did create a song called Overstand. Right. What, uh... <clears throat> What what was uh, Overstand about? Um, it's pretty much I wanted you guys to get a better perspective of me. Um, I went from talking about my brothers to my twin sisters all the way down to what they teach in school. You yeah. know what I mean? Like completely running down the board of you know the whole shebang. So it's just. Uh, major representation of overstanding me as a person and my mentality. So, it's not, there's actually a part in there that's like, I'll make you understand. And I'm like, nah. Nah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not making you understand anything. It's just like, overstand where I'm coming from. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? So, with everything they have going on, you have a lot going on, but you also have a mixtape. Correct? Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I can I can I indulge into that a little bit, or is that more of a surprise? No, I mean, how can I say this? Okay, so I got. I like saying yes to a lot of music, <laughs> and I'm always wanting to do music. Um, but it, it's your life. It's your life goal it is, to do music. It really is, and it's become that. It's a blessing. Um, but I had in my in my mind in December I was gonna drop a mixtape called Lottery Ticket. Let's start back over with Lottery Ticket again. Go ahead and. Excuse break, me. break it down for the people. <laughs> so, lottery ticket was... This is an observation of me noticing how people act around me. Um, I noticed since... I've said this saying before, and again, it's if you just take it for what it is and just listen to it and actually, you know, try to comprehend, you'll get it. You'll get it, I promise. Um, I said, once they find out you're Jesus, they expect you to walk on water. And I'm not saying I'm Jesus, you know what I'm saying? But the expectation, because you know this man is Jesus, you expect him to turn water to wine. You expect him to walk on water. You expect him to heal you. You expect, expect, expect. So out of this, it's like, I got a lot of people that seem like they were holding back on certain things, like waiting for me to make a move or, you know, what is Selassie and, you know, Oh, you know, just eavesdropping type, you know what I mean? Making yeah. little comments here and there. And it's like, are you waiting for me to blow before you really fuck with me? Are you waiting for me to blow before you actually want to this or that? Like, what are you waiting on? Like, you know, I don't pressure nobody into nothing. I don't, you know, I'm probably the easiest person to work with in this industry, honestly. And, um, you know, that was, I was just, sitting, I would sit back a lot of times and I'm like, like what? Like, what? <laughs> like you have the what are you waiting for? Yeah, like you have the opportunity here, and I'm telling you this. You know what I mean? Not to like, you know, I'm trying to help you, and I'm showing yeah. you. So it's like, what are you waiting on? So you know, that was the that was the big thing. So it was like lottery ticket. Everybody waits on that damn lottery ticket. They wait on the TV. So I feel like that's a lot of people's mentality once they you know start to see your vision. You have a song on there. That's been taken down three times. <laughs> three times. Oh, and that, let me just say that first off, that blows my mind. 
Oh, uh, what what is the song that that keeps getting taken down and that just it just can't be <laughs> destroyed? So, I did a remake to Drake's Blind Hype. Okay. Um, I'll take a step back because I did his Pound Cake. I remade that long time, long time ago, and you know that shit didn't do nothing. But for some reason, this song in particular, I whose fault? I think it was Armando's fault. Cause he got me on this like he you wanted know. you to do industrial beats. Yes, exactly. He wanted me to do the industry beats, <laughs> and I was like, you know, I'm not really into that. Whatever. He was like, man, slay it. Everybody else has been doing. You it. You can slay it. You're better than. I was like, man, okay, whatever. So I don't know. The beat caught me. I ain't gonna lie, and I snapped on it. And the song's not towards Drake at all. No. You know what I mean? It's. It's just I'm song. saying it's I'm real. saying it's blind hype, you yeah. know. I mean the, the definition behind me saying it's blind hype is like do not believe the hype, you know what I mean? Like you got flashing and all this, jewelry and all this, but yeah. you know, as soon as the cameras come off, he's gotta take that off and give it back to the jeweler and you know, write off that slip and say, Here's your money back, all fucking hundred thousand of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there better not be a dollar missing from you throwing it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like don't believe the hype. That's where the whole thing was. And speaking of industrial beats, you also have Panda. Panda. On there. <laughs> yeah. I, that, that one was more of just like a silly song for you to do. It was. I, I, I cracked up the first time I heard it and I thought it was Future. I didn't even go front. So, you know, it was a fun song. <laughs> it was a fun it was, song. It was a fun song. I ain't gonna lie. I just had fun with it. it that one's also on Armando as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's all Armando's fault. If you hear me on in, an industry beat, it's his fault. So, his fault. so, the one song... You already know I gotta ask you about this. Go ahead, go Cause, ahead. Cause I jumped on one with you. Yes, you did. Yes, you w- did. Was that one Armando's fault too? Um, or, I, or did you just kind of want to, or did you just select that one? Hold on, I think I think it was Mike Jones and Young or Strong Arm were in here, and Armando was playing something. Shout out to Strong and Mike. Yeah, shout out to them. And uh, I know I just said it like I, you know, I know these cats. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were in here and Armando was just talking about something about this song and I was like, you know, I should redo that. And they're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just sat there and I was like, hmm, I really like that melody. And then from there, it was just like, it, boom. I heard you doing the melody and I was like, that's just too easy. That is right. You wrote six bars before even telling me. You were like, I got something for this. I'm jumping on it. I remember. <laughs> and that was a good night. And not only did you, or did we record and edit it, we posted that same night. That same night. I think it was, what, two, two, three hours. We had it recorded and onto the website. That was a good-ass night. That was that was uh, getting a song done. That's how it should be done. Yeah, exactly. Write it right then and there and go. Mm-hmm. Um, that one was fun. Yeah. You brought up Mike Jones. Yes. And he has his, uh, he has his group called Money Train. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to Money Train. They jumped on your uh, Black album, correct? Or bl- well, the Black and White Project. Yeah, there you go. Black um, and White Project. We, he doesn't even know what, what song is <laughs> going on what. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, that one was a, a big collab. Yeah, it was Willie Phantom. Shout out to Willie. Um, he made the beat. Um, I, I, I had just was sitting talking to Mike. I was like, you know, we should do a project together, you know, or a song together. I feel, I feel like it'd be dope because, you know, at the time I had the record label, so it was like, I want to bring some of my artists to mix with some like, someone that they look up to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, past the wealth. So at that point, I'm like, well, let's do it. And we pulled up the beat. <clears throat> now I looked over at LSJ and I was like, write a hook. That boy put his head down. And like 10 minutes later, he had the hook. And, you know. First off, I was going to the song. All right. All right. All right. That's all right. That's all right. Sorry. I should have told y'all that. Um, yeah, it's called All Right. And um, it's just a real laid back, chill song. You know, it's not like Kendrick's Be All Right, but it's about being high. You know what I mean? So it, It's one of those songs that you can kind of just like cruise to. Exactly. No matter what type of situation exactly. you, just, you feel better. You feel better after listening to that exactly. song. Exactly. I actually had someone tell me that it was, it was so different to hear Mike Jones on that type of beat. And it was a really good thing. So I was stupid happy because they hear something like that, you know what I mean? Because they know how people act when yeah. you go outside your bubble or whatever, or whatever that shit may be. 
And the fact that they said that, and then, you know, further listening to the song, they're just like, that's just a well put together song. So it's a good mix, you know what I mean, with Exotic Airlines and Money Train. And, I mean, Money Train and, and Selassie just had a good blend. Yeah. Exotic, you, Exotic Airlines and Money Train had a really good blend. Yeah. Uh, two, two completely different styles joined together for one. Yeah. And I can't. I, like I said before, cannot wait, cannot <laughs> wait for all of this just to drop and blow up. Yeah, man. And actually, it was cool. Is he's dropping his album January first. So if it does end up on the Black album, you never know. Let and I, I heard from just like you know a little overview because you know how I am. I, I, I overhear a lot of things. <laughs> You're a hustler. I am. <laughs> I want to see if I can little, get a little nitpick at this. Okay. You have a tour, possibly, that you're going to be joining with, correct? Um, okay. Is, 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 is that finalized? Or? It's not finalized yet. Um, they're still in the making because he wants to be one big move before we do that, and then yes. So I'm not sure yet if it's... I actually, if I do it, I want it to be a mixture of Selassie... And Selassie I, because I want to bring the band up, and then I want to throw in a few of my solo tracks. So yeah, if it happens, um, I will let you guys know for sure. Uh, it's gonna be a big, to be a big, pretty big tour if, if we can pull it off. Not gonna lie, 2017 is looking to be the year of Selassie and Selassie I. It's it's looking pretty big right now from from everything that that we've talked about. Yeah, I'm trying to make it that way. Well, thank you for taking the time to sit down with the king of the streets. Yeah, right. So I've, been, I've, been, I've been waiting to do this interview. <laughs> I, think we, I think I got exactly what, what I've been looking for for the last year now, probably, going mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, man. I cannot thank wait. Uh, oh, before I forget, yeah. social media. Let's, let's nail that in. All right. That's very simple. Um, I am Selassie. I a m s i l a s s i e um that is everything my instagram my twitter my facebook hell everything soundcloud if you just type in if you just google, google i am selassie yeah everything everything up. comes up yeah and then for the band uh selassie i music s i l a s s i e capital i m u s i c um yeah Find us everywhere on that part. One more time, give us those release dates. Or uh, give us the release date for... The Black Album? The Black Album. <laughs> yeah. Uh, January 11th, my birthday. The Black Album will be out for you guys' buying. Well, thank you once again for taking the time out. Thank you. <laughs>